Is this going to work? Yay! Okay. So, just to remind everybody what we're doing, uh, there was conversations about how yeet exploration is not necessarily a great thing for alphas because alphas don't have cloaks. And uh, more pr particularly, in the uh, Inception MPE, it shows... <laughs> Sorry, in the Air MPE, the newest MPE, uh, it you don't fly a Corvette, you fly an Astero. And some people were like, I don't think that's a good idea for to show people an Astero like early on or whatnot. And my argument was is that the Astero is actually a, an amazingly good uh, early level, early goal for a new player. The concern was is that an Astero, uh, you know, an Alpha won't be able to cloak. Um, and my argument to that was that cloaking, while useful, is not essential to, uh, to doing well. So that's what this is all about. This is about experimenting how true that statement is. Yesterday, or last time we did this, we did it for one hour. I was going to do it for two, but then I didn't realize that it had only been one hour. Whoopsie. But now we are back at it again. Uh, actually, let me just post on Twitter real quick that I've switched over to Eve. With. One second. I apologize. I should have done this one during the break. Ha ha ha. Oh well. Just updating my Twitter. And then I'm going to post it on. Uh oh. There's somebody on local with me. I should stop fucking around. Drive active. Oh, I am so bad at this. That's not a way to make a safe either. Warp drive. Active. That's what I get for trying to do two things at the same time. And now I'm alone and local again, so whatever. Hey, look, it's the Jovian Nebula. Hey, Even Eventon. Man, I switched to Even. You show up like super fast. Hey, Ent. Wow. I switched to Even like three seconds later. All right. Killed them all. This character actually doesn't have any combat skills, I don't think. When I made her for the alpha program, her her whole story was that she was a uh, pacifist. What were we playing before? Uh, Final Fantasy fourteen. Uh, why does it say on Twitch that there's only two people watching? Uh, well, I had a low viewer count. Because of Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, and I assume that people are still trickling in now. Uh, you need to finish Shadow Walker? Yeah, I finished the MS, the like the Shadow Walker stuff past the main 
So I'm like completely done uh, yesterday or the day before. The story is so good. Combat site. Unnecessary. All right, let's figure out where we're at, where we want to go. We're in frat space right now. Which isn't this like frat's active time? Might not be a good idea. Average pilots in space. Let's see. Four pilots in system. Nothing, nothing. Hmm. What about down here? Is this the thing? Can I go here? That looks a lot quieter. All right, let's go. Uh, yeah. So you're probably getting there. So one of the reasons why, uh, one of the reasons why cloaks are largely unnecessary useful but unnecessary is that you know you can always have a safe and when you're in a safe you can keep an eye out for combat probes so while a cloak does like make you more protected it's not that you can't be protected without a cloak Warp drive active Safe are OP. I mean, not wrong. I like to liken different playstyles to different animals in like the uh, food, like you know the whatever it's called, food chain. Explorers are rabbits. We dart from bush to bush and try not to get caught. Well, that's the whole point, Eventon, is that I've been told that. Exploring with a cloak in a Stratios is dumb, no matter how good you are. So, I wanted to show that it can be done. Because people told me to not recommend that to, to new bros. Now, obviously, don't let this be the first thing you do, but, you know, you do some yeet exploration. People tell me to not recommend doing yeet exploration with, like, a 2000000 two million uh T1 frigate. Because, no, alphas can't have cloaks! It makes no sec dangerous. And uh, no, I'm not going to be impossible to catch because they they could get me with a. Um, they could get me with a gate camp in theory. Exactly. And th that is the point of this exercise. Cloaks are crutches. They are good to use, but not necessary. And I'm a firm believer. I'm a firm believer that you learn you learn to not use your crutches, and then you get the crutch, right? It's just like hacking, right? Like, when you first start hacking, you start out with equipment that has a rough time with things. And sure, that means that you don't get all of the cans, or you might mess up sometimes, or, or you know, whatever. It's a little bit harder. Um, but that's okay, because you're using cheap stuff, and, you, you know, you barely need to succeed at anything to be able to make a profit. But more importantly, you're learning. And once you can get good at it, in spite of the fact that you have poor equipment, then when you get the good equipment, it's like fucking cheating. Warp drive active. Ah, I keep failing to launch my probes first.
Yeah. The main explode is a Sinesis. In Nullsec? Do you use that in Nullsec? Hmm. I remember that the, uh, for a while, Interceptors were really popular uh, for exploration because of the um, interdiction nullification, which is actually one of the reasons why I like to use a Legion. So I keep reading uh, reviews of the capital sites, the new capital sites. Um, you you hate the nullifier because you value the burst jammer much more. Uh, I uh, I don't know. For exploration, I think I could go with either of them, but I definitely I I I understand and agree with your appreciation of the burst jammer. Um. So, the new capital sites. People have been running them, and from the sounds of things, a lot of people haven't been, or they think that the reward isn't good enough, or they're too hard, or whatever. A couple things about that. First of all, there's a reward to these things that CCP hasn't shown us yet, right? Like, the actual reward for finishing the sites, we haven't seen yet. So it could be anything. Hell, the reward for the site could be a fucking capital core temperature regulator. And congratulations, now you can buy, build carriers easier again. I'm not saying it will be, but like, we don't fucking know. It's probably going to be something new. Um, we also know that there's the part two of the industry changes that are coming up soon. There's new mining changes and mining, and mining ship rebalance coming soon. And, and we know that CCP has been talking about redoing capitals for two years. So, uh, yeah, it, well, it could be the drone damage mutas, but I, I, I sincerely, I, I'd be, well, maybe, maybe the drone damage mutas would be the reward from that. But if that was true, then they would just let that release because those are already on sissies, right? Like they would want us to test those too. So if that was the, if that was the prize, I would expect that they would already be using them or dropping them. Um... My point is that we are looking at it in this is uh, this happens a lot and I talk about it a lot. We are looking at the situation as it is now, right? And we're looking at it as if nothing else changes. So if changes happen to capitals, if changes happen to um, R4 moon reaction availability, if changes happen to the construction process of capital core temperature regulators, all of these things could dramatically and rapidly change the situation. So don't evaluate it in like, oh, my capital costs this much and I make this much based on this and all that stuff with right now. Because we're seeing one change of a constellation of potential changes that could, uh, that could be coming as part of this. And CCB has done this before, where they will show us the piece that they need us to test and then the the context of that piece shows up afterwards and given the fact that there was like the rogue drone event was almost like a stopgap it was relatively short but the scope video really does indicate that there's a lot more going on here so this is not going to be like the end of it either on top of that there's the new edencom sites that have still not been mentioned or talked about there's a, there is going to be some edencom stuff added to uli just like monuments and shit um, probably during totality day, but not everything on Sissy looks like it's just going to be a monument. Yeah, so, so CCP Hillmar, um, from a very long time ago, or like for, for a while, ever, basically ever since he came back, uh, one of the things he was talking about, one of the things that they've been talking about is the fact that, um, hold on. that work? No. Oh well. 
they didn't appear right away. Anyway, um, so the problem is that the difficulty curve in EVE Online is backwards, right? Frigates are very complex to fly. They have a lot of consideration comparatively. And capitals are relatively easy to fly. They have, they, um, as far as like moment to moment gameplay. So the skill curve is actually backwards when it comes to ships. And this is something that CCP identified as a problem. So they have been talking about adding more interesting complexity to capitals. One of the reasons why they nerfed them the way they did was because they couldn't add any new improvements to them without bringing what was already there in line, right? Because, like, if if they are both not cool enough but also do too much impact damage-wise, um, then if you give them more utility just outright, then you risk making the situation worse, right? Because they still have all of that combat capability, and now they also have whatever utility you add. So you bring down their capabilities until they're less desirable, and then you make them desirable again with utility. So we'll see. Also, my client is being super clunky today. Everything's being, like, really slow. I don't know. Uh, Jesus. Okay. Warp drive active. I don't want to use my stinky, uh, the stinky Galente sheep for PI. Let me use the Primate. It's interesting because the pri Primate was just a, uh, like a gimme for the expansion where they released PI. Warp drive. It might be interesting for them to go back and touch up the Primate and other, um, you know, rare ships. The Zephyr. The uh, Echelon. The Primate is not the only one that is interesting but unloved. Tech one hackers. I'm telling you, tech one hackers are definitely more of a limiter than than not having a cloak. Let me tell you. Uh oh. Uh oh. Is this guy gonna get me? Wanderer. That was one of the leaders from the other group, though. So maybe that is somebody from around here. Also from 2013. So reasonable chance that... Oh, nope, he's gone. <laughs> Never mind. I remember I was watching some streamer do this. Um, drive active. And I was like, well, there's a, there's a chance that they might be watching the site. And then, like, within, like, the, one or, like, the first or second site that they went into... Uh, a Proteus decloaks and kills them. I'm like, that, that's, that's just unfortunate. <laughs> hey, what's up, Opus Swan? Look at all that rule of six territory. Mm-mm, ju juicy.
You should always use your wrenches right away. Don't don't do what I did. Wait, what happened? Wait, what happened? There it is. Man, normally I jump back and forth between cans uh, to my pounce, but these guys are so close together, I'm just going to stick with it. The Facebook crash? I, uh... I'm going to reserve my comments on Facebook, about Facebook and social media at the moment, besides the fact that... I, I guess all I'll say is that Social media is doing us a lot of damage, and we need to figure out how to manage it. Warp drive active. Man, I started streaming Eve, and people show up. Good to see everybody. Uh, how do you feel about uh, Air, their introduction? Here we go. Hold on. Oh, Obus One raided me. That's why. Why didn't I see it? Wait a minute. Did I not get it? Did 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 it did the raid thing show up? That's what happened. Uh, Eventon says, "How do you feel about Air? Their introduction seems a bit sudden and kind of ste steep on, step on the toes of the SOE a bit." Uh, yeah, no, I wouldn't say that. Um, basically, they represent. Uh, an, a conduit for in the same way that upwell allows ccp to have a thing to introduce all kinds of structure mechanics into the game now they have a group to release kind of advanced technology or newbie stuff either one um pretty effectively and i don't i'm not convinced that air isn't a front for um sisters of eve it came up on the screen. I heard. Wait, I heard that. I don't know, but here is ten pennies. I love how it plays that, but I didn't hear the glorification of the fit. Hold on. I know. I'm sorry. Like, some people don't care about this, but I do. I do. Oh, I'm not on Discord. I should quit Discord for a little bit. That'll that'll free up some resources. Uh Yeah, I made a video on my YouTube channel. Hold on. I read the uh the World News Chronicle or the World News event that releases um that uh, with the release of AIR. All right. We're almost there. We're almost there, guys. There's... Okay. Glorification of the fit, mortification of the unfit. Obiswan, you, sir, are glorified. Everybody who's here that isn't, uh, that hasn't already, go follow Obiswan. Also, Nth Dimensional is also here, so uh, wave and uh, follow him as well. These are awesome people. Thank you so much for Obiswan. Sorry about the delay on getting to that, uh, but you know what? We got to it eventually. All right, let's see what's going on now. Anybody else who's around that is a streamer, first of all, if you see somebody with a diamond next to their name in my chat, it means that they are a Eve streamer. And if anybody is an Eve streamer in chat right now, go ahead and uh, wave.
Uh, air is not mainly focused on MPE. Hold on. Air has two branches. Hey, Sidewinder Spirit Weaver, he's a streamer too. Go ahead and follow him. Good dude. If I remember correctly, Sidewinder's one of those guys that started out watching streams and then he was like, you know what? I'm going to do it myself. There you go. Oh, yeah, Baconator Sam's emote. Another great streamer. We support all E streamers here. I need to work on my stuff to make it so that that's easier to do now again. I've got so much to do. I'm sure Nth Dimensional and some others are watching me do this and I'm like, oh my god, you're being so slow, but for some reason my whole my whole shtick is being slow. Maybe I should just switch back to the other computer. I do like this laptop though. Hold on. Does that work? Maybe. You just avert your eyes. Exactly. All done. Warp drive active. Hey. Glorification of the fit, mortification of the unfit. Jail Jalliant? Jalliant, I believe. Has raided with a stream of three. Thank you so much for your raid. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How was your stream? What'd you what'd you what'd you do in your stream? Now that you're here, sell yourself to our guys. We were just saying that we, we support all e streamers around here. So go ahead and tell us a little bit about your stream so that way anybody who's here can go follow it. Drive you look for solo PvP fights for three hours unsuccessfully. Ah, oh, okay. What were you in? I find if I go into faction warfare space, especially a little bit like off the beaten path a little bit, and I'm in like a new Tristan, I generally get some decent fights. An algo should get fights. A hook bill should get fights. Warp drive active. Tyrannus, less so. Did you try Faction Warfare space? Like, being in Faction Warfare and running Plexus is a, is a really good way to get attention. Hey, Seeds of Plenty! How's it going, man? All my friends are here. It was in Nullsec. Yeah, so I'll give you a hint. You're not going to find solo fights in Nullsec. The only thing that you'll get that's even close to that is the ability to maybe gank a, an ex, uh, a mission runner. Technically, that's 1v1. But uh, you're not going to get a real 1v1 fight in Nullsec. Like, at all. Yvonne is a really good option. Like, if you go from Yvonne to Hades, then... There's this really good loop to go around. You can check out the uh, Faction Warfare map at Aderon.org to get a bunch of information about the Warzone that you're flying around in. 
but actually being in faction warfare is even better let me tell you because like you're in the plex if nobody shows up you make money if people do show up then you fight how do you feel about the corrupted thanatos that appeared on hobo leaks i don't think you guys understand how much rogue drone stuff has been being put into the files for the last three months uh yeah there's a lot there's there's corrupted carriers there's corrupted battleships of all kinds um what I'm actually most interested in is the Edencom stuff. You got a 404 last time you tried to open up that map? Let me go check. Nope. It's up. There you go. Right there. So I'm way more interested in the uh, Edencom stuff. While there is, hold on, let's go to Hope Leaks and check this out. Rogue drone stuff. Well, Rogue drone stuff has been going on for quite some time because Rogue drones are 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 intimately tied to both the drifters and the sleepers, or as drifters and the Triglavians. That just 404 to you? I don't know what to tell you, Riley. I just went there. All right, so we're going to keep an eye on local. So what interests me here is actually this. Edencom Shield Facility. That's one of the things that gets me interested. Um, see, there's all these infested stuff, but there's been a lot of new infested stuff being put in. Let's just say that like over the course of the last few months. Um, so hard to say, but then there's new ages stuff being added in. They refer to a capital ship security facility in all of the, um, ages stuff that's been put in that isn't involved with the SEC. Um, so Okay, here, let me, where's the, uh, there we go. So, there is this being added, and this is probably coming for Totality Day, so this is going to be next week, right? This is a monument being, uh, being put in Uli, uh, to specify, you know, to, Uli is the capital of, Headco of uh, Concord, so there's a monument celebrating i guess edencom's defense including a list of uh all the systems that did get taken by pochfin but it establishes the fact that they there's defended over 150 star systems and they fortified 50 of them um so quite an accomplishment on edencom side which a lot of people don't really give credit to and there's a different like this shows the stellar observatory so and in the description of the stellar observatory down below i think it was it says um, basically that this is like the prototype that they've been working with. All this stuff has allegedly been uh, cl uh, cloaked up or, or, or um, hidden from us and now is being exposed because it's time or whatever. Um, so this all looks like, and then also in trig space, we have the Perun clade liminal proving grounds, the Velus clade Aut 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 automata semiosis subornost, and the Svarog clade orbital shipyards, as well as the Svarog clade or uh, Nafka Overmind Sabor co coalescence. So, uh, this ties into the fact that the Triglavians have enslaved slash uh, subjugated, whatever you want to call it, uh, a fair chunk of rogue drones, several of the rogue drone hives. In fact, the Second rogue swarm alert from 2017 or whatever, when uh, Taya Akira, the head of the Pharaoh Zathera, was kidnapped by a rogue drone. That rogue drone hive was confirmed by CCP to have been a Triglavian swarm, even though this happened prior to the Triglavians even really being exposed to us, which is interesting. Um, so the thing here is, is that Poachvin, one of the things they said about Poachvin is that the 
the flow shall cleave and that each um each of the factions each of the uh each of the clades shall have what they call eminence in their domain so what it really boils down to is the 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 uh, Triglavians don't necessarily like each other much um did that work where is it eh should be fine uh they don't like each other much Let, let's see whether or not this works i think it will maybe not Warp drive active that might have been too far nope perfectly fine so um each of the uh, so Pochvin's divided active. into three different cries of nine systems a cry is a uh, Russian or Slavic like territory, K R A I I think it is, um, and so each of the Triglavian factions have their own subsection of Pochvin, and this is important because they actually don't like each other, and ever since then there has been invasions and fighting between the clades within the Kries. Fuck! I think I just die right. Almost. Yep, I got it. Six point five million. Nice. So, the thing I like about these... Oh, I, I didn't put away the, ma the information there. Hold on. So, the thing about those uh, sites, I don't know if they're going to be much, like, as a, as a thing to interact with or, like, whatever. But the whole point of it is to um, make sure that... Or to, to start to differentiate the different Triglavians, right? So, Svarog... Engineering, powerful ship construction. This is kind of one of the things that they're known for. Um, Velas are uh, are known for being the ones that became friendly with the Rodrones. And Perun is kind of the leadership cast, in a way. Um, so having each of their cries having different structures in them is probably designed to kind of showcase the different priorities of the different um, Triglavian factions. Hey, Styler! Thanks for the shout out to Cloud Defender. So, but the thing that I find very interesting is that. Um, Oh, what? I didn't... <sighs> it worked. Um... Where was I? Warp drive active. No, you did. Thanks. Thanks, Tyler. Absolutely. Did you shout yourself out? I got you. Even if you did. I appreciate it. Uh, Warp drive active. So, I'm interested to see if that means that they're going to be adding more stuff, or, you know, doing stuff in Poachman, as a lot of people have been asking for. Um... Totality Day would be a great time to do that kind of thing. Um, there is a lot of opportunities for them to advance the storyline of Pochvin further. And a lot of people would be interested in that. But more importantly, like I said, those Edencom sites, there are a lot of them that or several of them that look like they're just a ULI monument. But there's also those ones that look like or that say that you need to hack them and you need to use key cards on gates. 
So there really is a suggestion that there's going to be new sites uh, similar to the SCC sites to the point where I, I, you know, the SCC sites are maybe almost an experiment for some of these things because the stuff, including the rogue drone stuff, has literally been being put in at the same time as those SCC sites. You can actually go back in my Twitter and, and find where I first found the pods. The rogue drone pods, not I found, but like it was brought to my attention. Um, and that was months ago. SEC sites. SEC sites are the low sec sites where you can get the uh, RSS reserve bank keys. They're incredibly difficult, hard to find, and require, in theory, two to three people. Yeah. But like a lot of the things, so they added in a whole bunch of stuff for sites. And some of that stuff became the SCC sites, but not all of it. And as we can see in Hoboleaks, they're adding more stuff that seems like the kind of stuff that you saw in those SCC sites. So I'm hoping that this is an indication of more to come. How are these all threes? One, two, three? No. One, two, three. Hey! Drive active. Uh, Bustard. Bustard is a hauling ship, which means I'm basically safe. Drive if, if a Bustard lands in this site and tackles me and kills me, they fucking deserve it. Even if it lands, points me, and then lights a Sino and brings in Blops. Congratulations, you killed my Asphero. Drive active. So just remember, guys, I am doing this on an alpha account. So this is a free to play account. Nothing, never had any... Actually, this account has never been Omega. Uh, I made this account back when alphas were first introduced as part of an alpha challenge program. So actually, it has... She has only Mimitar skills. Because back then, uh, alphas were racially locked. And she was my Mimitar alpha. I think that's it. Yep, that's it. Sweet. <laughs> Alpha's rule, Omega's drool. Hell yeah. All right, there's one person there, two people there. Nobody there, nobody there. Sure. 
We'll go with it. Warp drive active. One of the things that always frustrates me is people that say alphas are just a trial. Because, like, CCP doesn't like it either. Um, alphas are designed to be vi completely viable to play, even long term. The only thing is, is that you don't get to be part of the bourgeois, right? You don't get to be, you don't get to have the, uh, the means of production, as it were. You get to be a consumer, not a producer. And as long as you accept that, then alpha, alphas can be great. The issue is that newbies also have a tendency to want to mine. And those two things are incompatible. <laughs> Something really angry out there. We are really close to Jove space. Alphas are force multipliers. It's very true. Actually, um, one thing that is nice about alphas, uh, for sure, is that they have a tendency... So, because they often can't fly... Like whatever the doctrine is for the for the fleet, they're the ones that end up being tackle and e war and other things like that. So they are literally force multipliers. Oh, is that the is that the Garissus talking? Is that real? You know that for real, or is that you just joking around? Do the different empires or different pirates have different sound effects? That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Really? Different empires have different sounds. I don't know. That dude starts... Eve starts mining, breeds, the, the sitting in the belt for hours mindset. No, I, I, I'm not saying that it's... That they should give people mining. What I'm saying is that... The fact that the process seems to lead new players to mining... I think is ends up being a mistake... Because it's not what alphas do. It'd be way better if they taught you to do missions by like giving you basic equipment and then having you go do the missions. And then later on, you're like, oh, well, I want to be able to build ships for myself. And then that brings up the process of resource acquisition. Like, I really wish that mining was less of an emphasis towards newer players. Gas is really good for alpha counts? Sure. But is it good for new players? That's my point. Like, a new player that comes straight out of the tutorial, like, a fair chunk of the time, they end up thinking that mining is the way to go. This was true before alphas even existed. Um, and it's always been pro kind of problematic because, like, the new player goes, okay, well, I want, I want to be able to do this better. And that ends up them wanting to do, like, high-sec mining more. They want to get better equipment. Like, it just creates all kinds of, like, secondary effects. Because they think that that's the, the right thing to do. And then in the end, you know, some of them learn that it's not the right thing to do. But at the same time, some people really, really enjoy that. And so the issue is, is that then experienced players shit on mining full stop to new players when, uh, whoa. Uh, you know, they tell people to not mine even when they enjoy it, right? So now we got people who should be mining who aren't and people who shouldn't be mining who are. And, uh... My point is, is that either way, mining is not a task that they expect... <laughs> Mining site. Awesome. Uh, where was I? Mining is not a task that is designed for alphas. Period. So, 
especially when you if you're going to expect them to be an alpha, then you should point them to things that that are more successful for alphas. I understand that you're not. I'm not saying that alpha accounts are new players, but I'm talking about what happens to new players, and they also happen to be alphas. Not all alphas are new players, but almost all new players are alphas. That's my point. Warp drive active. So the first thing they do is they feel like something about the MPE tells people that mining is the first step of the game. And while that was iffy before, it's just straight up incorrect when it comes to alphas. Oh, golly, I'm, I am sucking at making these pounces today. My, it's because of the, the, like the hangs that are happening on my client. What was it that I made that made it work before? There was something I did. What was it? Shoot. I don't remember. When I was having all the market issue, I finally got it to fix. Boris, I, I, yes, the career agents, especially the, since there is a mining career agent and that seems to be like the low keyest one, that's probably a big piece of it. Sure. I mine in Hakate and I'm, and I mine fleets of Garissa's ventures and fob systems. Yeah, exactly. Gunboat mining. Mining is a good way to get into that first ship while you're still trying to figure out the game. I actually disagree. No, you know what I think you know what I think is doing it more than the career agents? The fact that the first thing that they often give you is a venture. Yeah, I mean why why should we why is it a good thing to give them a mining ship so that way they can get their first ship. I mean, the combat the combat career agent gives them a destroyer. Like let's let's increase the oh my god. Let's increase the viability of uh of the combat path for new players. Like what if what if what if thirty percent of the people who end up starting out with mining instead started out with faction warfare? Warp drive active. You need to know nothing about the game in order to circle a rock. You're right, but that also means it doesn't teach you anything about the game. Besides make money. And it also so the issue is is that we teach players that the first thing they need to do is accumulate money. But, or ISK. But you know what? That actually shouldn't be the first thing you focus on. You should focus on using cheap stuff in order to learn things. Because that's the whole thing. You've got to advance yourself first. It's just like, it's just like if you want to make gold in World of Warcraft or another, or guild in Final Fantasy, I guess. Uh, you know, you don't, you don't worry about it when you're level, you know, 10 or 20. Like, you don't ask how is the best way to make money when you're 10, level 10. The best way to make money when you're level 10 is to level the max level and then worry about it. Right? So, in the same way... What? How is so many things to... Oh, it's all right there. That's why.
That'll work. Damn it! <laughs> it wasn't even it. Which means it's probably there, but it's okay. I still have a shield on. Or not. That's cool, too. This has been, like, the biggest slog at site. Alright, whatever. 30, 30, that'll work. It's one reason I like how certain events teach discrete mechanical aspects of the game. The Grissus event teaches you how to descan. So, you're right. Halfway. I agree that those are really good. And I really, really like them for that reason. But the thing I don't like about them is the fact that they don't teach you how to do these things. Right? They're, the Garissus event doesn't teach you how to do descan if you don't already know. It rewards you for descanning. Faction warfare in a Corvette would kind of suck. Yeah, but by the time you're out of the military and advanced military missions, you're starting to get, you already have combat ships. So, right, but just killing you by not getting it right, or more importantly, fi making it so you can't figure out how to find anything. You know, I know people who were just warping around looking for pods for days. Because why would they think that there's a better way? Right? Why would they know that there's a better way? If the game never introduces them to the concept. Suppressors suck. Nobody told them how to do it. Yes, sure, the game must tell them this is how to descan works before you can expect them. Exactly, yeah. I mean, like, that's not teaching them how to play it. That's just punishing them for not knowing how. Warp drive active. Right, exactly. That's my point, is that the Garissus event, if nothing else, really highlighted the fact that descan isn't taught by the game at all. Drive I, I said this before. I think that the uh, the MPE, I think that what they're doing right now with the MPE is really, really smart. Um, but we'll have to see how it boils, boils down. Because if you notice, the, the new MPE is extremely short. The point is to teach them the very, very basics, right? Lock orbit, you know, lock, uh, yeah, lock orbit, shoot, you know, whatever. Like the basic piloting stuff. And then... From there, what they should do is make it so that you can learn different aspects of the game when you're ready to. Like, this idea of, like, a front-loaded tutorial that forces you to read a ton of wall of texts about aspects of the game that you're going to be playing that aren't going to be relevant to you for hours, days, or, you know, possibly ever. Like, that's just bad design. We've made... We've, we've gotten better at teaching people how to play games. There are better ways of doing tutorials. So, giving players an opportunity to, uh, basically, like, let's say, so you replace, hold on. All right, well, let's go ahead and start. Hey! Um, so, but then, 
like if you replace like let's say we replace agency with aura right or or not whatever um but now when you open up the aura or agency and you go to the tutorial section like these explorer soldier of fortune these videos are pretty neat but what if these were the tutorials what if when you came here like it says okay well now go go to the aura to find out what you want to do and you're like okay well there's exploration okay well Cool. There's exploration. Okay. Well, signatures. How do how do I do this? And ra and have it give you an opportunity to play through the tutorial. And if you click on it, it just says, "Please dock up," so that way we can begin the tutorial. You dock up. You click the thing, and then it takes you to a sterilized environment where it teaches you exactly that concept, and then drops you back in. So that way people can have a refresher when they want to, and you know whatever, and it stays out of their way. So that way. Whenever they want to know something that they don't understand, they know to go to this one place and it'll teach them. Kind of like flight simulator style. Exactly. Exa exactly. We're learning how to fly fucking spaceships. Warp drive active. I remember the 2018 hunt event being so easy my rat fit scorpion could solo it. The hunt event? I thought that was like, wasn't that frigates and destroyers only or something? I don't remember. That's true. The new, the newest combat events have been really, like, in my opinion, overtuned for alphas. Fuck. But there's a thing about people, you know, like. Really what it's trying to do is get you to cooperate together, right? But the issue with that is, like, I am shocked at how much the player base resists finding a fucking friend, right? Like, they will do everything within their power to multibox it. And more importantly, if they can't, they see that as a problem. Not that working with people is rewarding in its, in its own right and therefore things that require coordination should be more rewarding because you're to reward you for that coordination no 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 like the player base refuses to interpret any activity in eve that isn't like explicitly raid content as it were as solo which blows my mind and makes me sad Uh... Oh, good, he's gone. I know, I don't, I don't get it. Like, first, you multi-box it. You, you take content that's designed to be ran as a group. You multi-box it, and then you complain that it's boring. So, I'll have you know that... Part of the fun of games is doing it with another person, right? Like, doing the Abyss by yourself is not the same as doing the Abyss with another person. Not just because it's harder or whatever like that. It's because you now need to coordinate with an entity, an intelligence outside of yourself. Right? Like, there, and there, th this is nothing new. I mean, like, let's, I like to point out Overcooked, right? Overcooked is this uh, game, the party game, up to four people. And your job is to, you know, cook stuff. But the levels are designed as such that you're supposed to coordinate together. And the better you coordinate together, the more you can do. So you could theoretically, you can play the game by yourself if you want to. But nobody does. And it, it would be incredibly lackluster with, with it being that way. It's fun because it's fun to try to coordinate with people. Especially in a game like this, where they want, you know, if you want to be in fleets, if you want to work with, well with other people, if you want to get into faction warfare with you and your buddies, you should start with frigate PvP. And don't just take the cheapest cheese dick fucking PvP or uh, uh, abyss fit where y y each person just kind of anchors on the one guy and just follows the commands. You might as well be multiboxing at that point. Like, take on situations that challenge you. 
that will kill you if you get it wrong. Do it with cheap stuff. You're not doing it for money. You're doing it to become better as a team. The money is incidental. Like... It, we talk about how important corporations are. We talk about how important learning from other players are. And yet, we staunchly refuse to do multiplayer content. It just sucks. Makes me sad. Hell, I liked it when Exploration had uh, spew loot containers. Liked it is probably a strong word, but like I was okay with it. And the reason why was because I could bring out somebody else, right? And sure, their job was basically to watch me do the stuff, but that was the point. Like I could bring out a newer player it's like, okay, your job is to sit here, and I'll hack it out, and then when it can start showing up, just grab as much as you can. Now that person has a role that requires very little comprehension, but, can, but I need them, so I bring them along with me. And while that happens, they learn how to do it correctly. And I hope, I hope with the longer explanation that you got, you might, that, that changes things a little bit. I'm not saying that they should bring back loot spew but when it was a thing i appreciated the fact that i could bring another player with me and there was value to that because right now hacking and exploration which is a very difficult thing for somebody to learn especially just out of the tutorial you know it could be useful to have a mentor mentee relationship with that but the sites themselves don't really favor that at all Right, there's no value now. That was my that's my point. I okay. I did not like Loot Spew as a mechanic per se, for a lot of other reasons. The one piece I liked about it was that it added value to another person coming along with you. That's all. That's all I'm saying. I will I will say that like since the inverse of it, it oh god, there's there's more than one person here now. Oh, except for I'm not in a scannable site now. Right? I don't know, but I'm leaving. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, because they would need to... Yeah. They would have to... That's a senesis. Alright, guys. I'm, I'm going to need to pay attention for a few seconds, because uh, this could get squirrely fast. Maybe CCB should add a mentor program. We were just talking about that, actually, during my Final Fantasy period, because, or while I was playing Final Fantasy, because Final Fantasy actually has a uh, pretty interesting mentor system. We talked about it for quite a bit. There's, there is definitely some significant hurdles for That's CCP right. to pass okay. when it comes to that kind of thing. It, it could theoretically be ripe for abuse or, or ineffective. But I think that having a mentor system like thing that is attached to corporations so that way corporations can earn accolades for helping people and gain a reputation in that i think that's a good idea maybe personal like individuals could get recognition a little bit we the, somebody mentioned uh mike azariah man there's too many fucking people in the system right now i'm out i'm out i'm out guys i'm out we gotta go my cargo hold's almost full anyways. We gotta go. We gotta go. Let me pull my drones in. Okay, those are... Praxis. Corax. Tau... Whoo! Are they moving through? Where are they going? Not where I'm going. Sweet.
<laughs> Run, leave. We'll see. We'll see. I like this area, though. Heron. Yep, we're out. Bye. Yeet. Warp drive active. I am in angel space. So just to remind everybody what we're doing, what we're doing is uh, with the MPE, they give you an Estero at the beginning of the MPE. And there are some people that believe that that's not a good thing to give to new players. Um, I actually think that the Estero is a great first goal for a new player. Um, and to demonstrate that, I am flying around in an Estero with no cloak as on an alpha character, just like an alpha would. <laughs> Out of the frying pan into 1DQ. That'd be sad. I'd probably safe up, warp around for 15 minutes, and then yeet again. I mean, don't get me wrong, the Heron is also a good choice, but my point is, is that if, if the player goes through the MPE, sees the, uh, sees the Astero, and goes, oh my god, I want to get one of those things, that's not a bad idea, and that path will take them through the Heron. So, just saying. It's a, it's an, it's an excellent early to mid-range uh, mid goal. If they teach people that they have the means to defend themselves? Uh, you mean in the MPE? Um, I'm not sure how you would actually sort that out. I mean, like, MP tutorials are designed to not be brutal. Most MPE actually means it, it's consistent with PVE, not PvP. Sarah is just a better Tristan. Go run high sec combat and learn speed tanking skills. Exactly. Exactly. Also, it doesn't need to be lasers. Um, the bonuses of the Astero. Oh, yeah, it doesn't even have laser bonuses. It's drone bonuses. So you could use any turret. The stars are like 100 million at the moment. Yes, they are. They are spendy. But again, mid-range goal, right? The, right now, best case scenario, they like want to get it. Not best case scenario, but like most of the time, at best, they're going to want to, like, get into a, a battleship. But at worst, they're like, oh, what's the coolest thing around? And they get into a Titan because they're poking around and stuff. By giving them this, you know, by, by teasing them with this pretty in, and interesting ship at the very beginning, that gives them a, a decent path if they choose to take it. Then they end up meeting PvP and go, oh, this sucks. I just got my mission raven blown up. Uh, well, most of the time to have that happen, you'd have to bring your mission raven to low sec. Which, I mean, people do that, absolutely. But, like, they have to go past a couple of warnings before they end up in that situation. Again, the MPE should... The, the actual MPE, the thing that you expo you're exposed to when you first, first join the game, should teach the bare minimum of how to fly and operate in the game. 
and then have advanced tutorials like the career agents, but not the career agents, that teach individualized t concepts that you can look at and run and exper and try at whenever you want. I should be able to be out here. I should yeet out. I should be able to yeet out to Nullsec, scan down a site, and then be like, "Oh shit, I don't even know how to hack," and then like be able to pull up the tutorial for it. Now you can pull up the video for it, but here's the thing. The videos don't get pointed to by the tutorial. So, and I, that's obviously a result of the tutorial being old. So with the new systems, the new MPE that they're working on, they're integrating the whole agency thing. So like, uh, not agency, the uh, academy, Eve Academy thing. And the concepts that, those Eve Acad that the Eve Academy organizes itself with, right? So for instance, um, you know, we had career, you know, we have a uh, military, advanced military, business, etc. and exploration career agents, right? Well, now we have, hold on, we have, where's my skills? Now we have explorer, enforcer, industrialist, and soldier of fortune, right? And these four play styles are what's on the academy. They are w the way that skill plans are laid out. So this really does look like the paradigm that CCP is shifting people over to. Is when you're when you first join the game, you think about which one of these four you want to be, and it begins to guide you down that path. That's why they don't teach you to add skills to your skill plan anymore. They they teach you to select a skill plan and use it. Actually, they don't even really do that. But hopefully, the the career agent stuff will or the career agent replacement will will follow up with that. The fact that the fact that the MPE tells you to close your skill plan when they know for a fact that you have no skills in your skill queue is probably the single most frustrating thing that I have with the new MPE. Like, I, I get that you're going to maybe teach them how to do skills later, but telling them to close the skill window, forcing them to close the skill window without a skill already, like, in the thing, it's not just not teaching them. It's teaching them a bad habit. Like, you, you should never, ever, ever do this. And the tutorial tells you to do it. Like, it's no big deal. That's the one piece of the tutorial that really frustrates me at the moment. But again, I hope that the uh, the career agent follow-up that com that's coming next will rectify that a bit. But still, even 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 still, even still, I still don't like the fact that it ever does it tells you to close the skill window without telling you to put on a skill first. Yeah, it really does feel like Rather than skill training over time, it's a thing that you acquire skill points and then you select what skill you do. Which, I mean, maybe that's what they're going towards. Maybe maybe we're going to see a skill skill change where they get rid of attributes and you now skill, skill train passively and uh, you it goes into unallocated and then you can allocate it to whatever you want. Uh, I don't like that idea, but it's very possible. It's not a big deal. You can buy injectors later to spend it. Let's <laughs> see. Oh. Even, you know, even with that being true, that still doesn't make it okay to not have a skill queue slow training. I mean, there are there are two suicide missions in the career agents. But so the problem with the suicide missions in career agents is that it still doesn't like it doesn't surprise you with it, right? You know that you're going to go and get blown up. It tells you. You prepare for it. So you're not teaching people that shit can go wrong. You're teaching people that occasionally this might be asked of you. Joe Kakoma, thank you for joining us down the rabbit hole of Steve Online. Which is not true. I, I legitimately think that they should have one of the tutorials give you a mission. But when you go there, everything goes wrong and you get backstabbed. And yeah, they might lose their cool ship and with everything in it. You might need to catch that and give them a replacement if this happens or something like that. But... 
like they you need to experience things going wrong in a surprising and destructive way. It only tells you if you can read. Yes, the uh, the wall of text issue is 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 a big one. Yes, the Inception MPE did that, but the problem with the Inception MPE was that it took like three hours, and by the end of it, it it, it set up an expectation of what Eve Online is, and Eve Online is not that. So while people really really enjoyed the MP uh, the Inception MPE. It ended up making people not like the game as much because the game wasn't the MPE and the MPE is better and more engaging. So people were like, people felt bait and switched by it. Catfish. There you go. Active. I'll tell you a joke from my experience. After I tell it to other players, they agree with me. The most frustrating moment in having an all five skill character is uh, your skill queue is empty all the time. Oh no. I don't know if I'd be able to handle that. Also, you have a perfect skill? You have a perfect character? Good gal. Drive. That's true. That's true. You could extract a skill. So that way you can train it again. That's actually a really good idea. Take like 5 million skill points that you don't mind and just keep extracting it and, and selling it because you know, you can substitute you can you can um subsidize your account with with skill farming by selling off your SP earned every month. But, you know, then you don't get to earn it. But if you already have them all, you might as well you might you might as well never play for Ome pay for Omega again. All right, thanks. Did that pod disappear. I feel like I'm about to be trapped. I've got a very bad feeling about this. Not really a great time for there to not be anything either. There it is! Damn it, I didn't name I didn't name my pounce. Fuck, hold on. Warp drive active. Uh people see the ads with big ships and hundreds of ships in battles, then they start the game and find out. It'll take them years to do that, and they just leave. That's actually a big. Pro that's that's one of the things that started this effort to kind of redo the game with a retention focus in mind. Um, the apex of this was, of course, BTAC R. Active. Who, who is this guy? Am I? He's only twenty twenty. Ah, he might get me. He might get me. I don't think so, but he might. How much of the oh yeah, he could be all kinds of different places. Never mind. We should be fine. Um, you know, BTAC R was a huge draw for people, but retention from it was awful because people came in thinking that this is a game that does BTAC R, and A, it doesn't do that very much, or it doesn't do that all the time, and B Turns out, being in BTEC R 
sucks compared to reading about it <laughs> or, you know, being in tie-dye fights, etc. So, yeah, it's another one of those examples of people feeling kind of cheated by, the, by it. And so CCP has worked really hard to, to get away from that idea of fleet fights are the only thing. But again, the player base is going to believe whatever the fuck the player base wants to believe. So the player base has resisted this paradigm shift. But if you pay attention to what CCP has been doing, you can really see that in 2016 or so, that's when we saw this big change. And yeah, they've staggered through it for the most part. But, um... God damn it. But it's still a thing. Fuck! Whatever. That works. Tech R is the reason why you joined Eve. Thanks to Eve Uni, you kept playing. Well, that's good. I mean, don't get me wrong. A lot of people did stay, but a lot of people didn't. And, you know, like, so we as players like to celebrate or, or even fetishize things like Nullsec as being like the tippy top. Like, I hear this all the time that Nullsec is the reason why, you know, is the advertisements and all that stuff. But if you pay attention, for the last few years, they've actually done, they've focused on showing off uh, the the fleets, the Nullsec stuff, less. And focused on, more on things like invasions, and the drifter attacks, and uh, other player accomplishments, like, like um, Katya Sai. Because we think that that's the most important thing in the game. But that isn't what CCP thinks is the most important thing in the game. And I don't, that's not even what I think is the most important thing in the game, is the big fleet fights. That is a important part of the game. And the reason why we feel it is disproportionately important is because the people that engage with it are by definition more organized and therefore get their voices out more. But that doesn't mean that other people don't enjoy doing the other stuff. And there aren't a lot of people that would rather just not do th those things and have a lot of other aspects of the game that they're interested in. So CCP has been focusing more on that. I mean, and I'm not saying that they're not like working on like server architecture or making sure that high-end fights are good. They certainly are. But my point is, is that that isn't what's going to save them. Because as, as CCP has said it, they don't have an attraction issue. They have a retention problem. So it, is, it doesn't matter that Nullsec brings in a bunch of people because CCP gets 5,000 new players to come check out the game like every day. They got plenty of people that come and try out the game. But if the experience of trying out the game is bad, then all they're doing is creating an engine that turns potential players into X players. And that's not great. Now, there is an advantage, which is that, you know, because of the fact that it's free to play, they can kind of be okay with it not working out right away, especially since CCP has proven or has statistics that show that, like, the average person tries at least two or three times before they get hooked into EVE. Um, and there's a lot to that as well. But so CCP... And, and really all free-to-play, if you've noticed, free-to-play games care a lot less about whether or not you leave and come back, right? If, if you leave, that's fine, because it's free-to-play. As soon as you want to be part of it again, you're just going to rejoin. Um, that's, how, that's how a lot of times they think about it. Whereas when it comes to, like, subscriptions, obviously every month that you're gone is them losing money. But the, the other point is, is that if you... A player that a player that hears something cool about Eve but doesn't try it still thinks that Eve might be pretty cool. But a a person that tries out Eve and doesn't like it walks away with whatever impression they had.
And that's w what they believe. All right, well, suck. That's my first hack of the- uh, that's my first failed hack of the day. Not bad for alpha equipment. I mean, if that guy was actually gonna trick me, I think he would have done it by now, right? I also have not had a single rule of six so far today. If you can't entertain yourself, it'll be hard to live in ETH. Sure, but CCP needs to give you the tools to know how to entertain yourself. To be honest, this is why, like, the pivotal moment is so important. Like, a lot of times we think that being ganked as a new player ends up being a problem, but the stats actually show that players that get ganked within the first 30 days have a much higher chance of being retained than somebody who doesn't. And there's a lot of good reasons for this. But it really boils down to a game, ga video games can have negative experiences. And players, generally speaking, know to pick themselves up and do better. I mean, some people might get better, bitter or whatever. But even those people, if you quit because of that, it's going to hang in the back of your head forever. That you're, you, you're not playing EVE now because you weren't, you didn't hack it, right? But... If a person goes the entire 30 days and nothing happens, the chances of them thinking that there's just nothing to this game, that it's boring, is very high. And let me tell you, it is far worse to be a hard, be a boring game than it is to be a hard game. Warp drive active. CCP should give free Netflix accounts with every sub. I mean, I think that it'd be cool for them to do cross-promotional stuff. You got Gory to come back? Really? Um, let me catch up a little bit. One resource the MPE needs to be better at directing new players into the social interaction. The barrier for new players who saw BTEC are um, is not just years of training, but also engagement with the... And the other thing is, is that if... C so often we're... What's up, uh, Dennis? Uh, often we are worried about CCP favoring, favoring certain corporations. Or more importantly, we're, uh, you know, there's a concern that if CCP makes an automated system that promotes player organizations, that Goon Swarm is just going to, you know, game it and make sure that they, you know, are at the top of everything. But here's the thing about that. Uh, Goon Swarm already is basically the only group that somebody who outside of the EVE knows about, right? Like, I can't tell you how many people come into this game and talk to me, and literally the only thing they know is the name the Matani. Right? So, trust me, goons already have their recruitment, right? Like, like the game already, in a way, pushes people to large null block groups. And they have the ability to send out their messages. But they're not the ones that need help recruiting. And they're not the ones that really, uh, like, those play styles are well constructed. Those groups are well organized and well established. It's other groups that cater to other play styles that I think need to be uh, assisted. Yeah, not only go uh, goons, all of the big ones, once the players are experts in gaming the system. Yeah, and that's, there. there is a certain amount of like, you, you would need to figure out how to prevent people from being able to game the system. Or more importantly, It, it might be okay. It, it, it would be best to develop a system 
that doesn't really matter if it's being gamed, right? One way or another. And there's there's some ways to do that. Um, but like, yeah, sure. Let Null, let let Goon Swarm and and Brave and all these people tell everybody that they do everything and have a million endorsements to put them towards the top of the list or whatever. That's fine. But if you do a combination of activity-based tracking, so that way the person doesn't self-identify what they do, but it's actually based on the activity of the players within the group that determines what the group is, is said to be doing. Um, which I think would be really funny because I'm, I, I wonder how many PvP groups would be flagged as a PvE group because they do way more PvE than PvP. But either way, uh, oh, damn it, I didn't do my pounce again. All right. Um, but as long as you have the correct filters in place, then it doesn't really matter if if all of these no blocks have giant endorsements because other groups will also have endorsements and may have other things that can be filtered for. And so when people are looking for something, they're discerning too, right? And maybe maybe they do go to a big block right away. And maybe they decide that's not good for them. And so then they look for a smaller group. The point is, is that we don't have these tools right now. So it doesn't matter how we use them because we can't, we don't have them. The, the in-game recruitment system is basically a hidden feature to the point where it's not useful to even, why did I do that? Don't open up caches, kids. Uh, oh, fuck. Yes! Miracles exist. Sort of. What an emotional roller coaster. Oh my god! Okay. Hold on. <gasps> Fuck yeah! Alright. Warp drive active. <laughs> Did I even loot it? I don't even know if I lo looted it. I looted it, right? The problem with that approach is the same representation problem as we previously discussed with player retention. If players think the game is a quiet wasteland with occasional sociopaths, they disengage. If they're directed to huge corp life and if they find it distasteful, they will find the game is just that. Right. But if, if, they, if they properly present the situation as there are multiple kinds of corps with multiple kinds of focuses, then people will know better that if this group doesn't work out, then I need to find a different one. I mean, uh, every MMO has this, right? Like, you know, when you're trying to find a free company in Final Fantasy or a guild in World of Warcraft, right? Like, everybody teaches that, that idea. Like, you know, try out different groups, and if it doesn't work out, go find a different one. That wisdom is not taught in EVE because it's really hard to do that. Comparatively. Get wrecked! Just to double check. Oh no, it's not even close. Never mind. Warp drive active. What's up, spoons? Oops, wrong pounce. I think I have enough isk that I should probably start figuring out a way to get home. And I have these poach fin filaments to get home too. Warp drive active. The genius of CCP is that 
of all these conversation points towards a certain promotional content that is always already released. Right now, for an example, there's a conversation. This conversation is making me think of the small industrial corp trailer about building ships to order. Yeah, and that's the thing. While we've been all sitting there talking about you know trying to act all smart and hoity-toity in our in our chairs, this whole Eve Academy thing is actually really incredible. Um, and and this goes back to like even the skill planning thing and how players don't like older players don't like the new skill queue system because it's a completely different paradigm. It's not just a different interface; it's a different paradigm about what how you think about your skills, right? Uh, and and it's training. The the newer players are being taught a different way to think about the game that they are playing. I wish that CCP did more to keep the experienced players in the know. But whatever. Wait, was that a mat? Yep, that's a that's a rule of six. Yeah, yeah, I finally had a rule six. There it is. So what that means is that if a node has a node in every direction, all six nodes that it could, could potentially be connected to has a node in it, then either that spot is completely safe or if it has some sort of defense in it, that means that the core is adjacent to it. So when I went to that node and it had a defense node in it, um... That made me know for a fact, 100%, that there is, that the core was, was next to it. Also, the corpse spawn, spent a lot of effort to do everything, even though they don't do, obviously, a vet sees through the marketing, but new player has no knowledge about how to confirm those claims. That's why one of the things I was suggest. So, so there's two things that I was talking about earlier um, when we were, it was when I was playing Final Fantasy, so I had like three people here. But um, like Final Fantasy has this mentor system, which is both good and bad. So we were kind of musing about how that would work in EVE Online. And so I think that um, a combination of having endorsements, like a Yelp review type system. Sure, again, Goonswarm will game the system and make themselves look fucking awesome. But that's okay, because it's also going to let other groups also look fucking awesome. And Goonswarm already has all the propaganda to make them look fucking awesome, right? So let's make sure everybody else has that too. So first and foremost, you could have like a, a, a system where people can endorse or, uh, you know, whatever, the, the, the corporation, especially if it helps new players or whatever. Um, but also, just have what the corporation says that it does be based on the actual activity of the players, right? The player base. So if your group does a, enough mining, you know, mines enough ore per per month per week, um, per capita, then congratulations, you get flagged as a mining corp. Again, I think it, uh, that would be even funnier because I can't wait for all of the groups that claim to be these hardcore PvP groups that get flagged as PvE because they do more Pv way more PvE than PvP. We all like to act big and bad. Activity-based tracking would be funny as hell. <laughs> I Not downvote each other, but... So, like, okay. The way Final Fantasy works is that, like, there are dungeons, and a lot... The, the game is kind of designed to, to link you up with randos in dungeons. But it also makes it in such a way that this is not a negative experience. And then at the end of every dungeon, you're authorized to give one commendation. And you're not allowed to give a commendation to your own group mate. So, as you collect commendations, you earn rewards. And if you get enough commendations and other things, then you can become an official mentor. Which allows you access to the new bro training channels 
uh, and uh, get you can get other rewards for for being a cool mentor. Um, now there's there are problems with this system, and, and in fact, a lot of gaming problems too, because a lot of people end up going with the mentor system just to get those rewards, and so they end up not being respectful of the mentor system. But overall, the mentor system in, in Final Fantasy is lauded as being somewhat valuable. And the thing that I find the most fascinating is that in Final Fantasy, if you're within the first like 70 days, you have a little sprout over your head. And a lot of people would, are terrified by this by instinct because they're like, oh my god, this puts a big target on my head. But in that game, that ends up not happening. That people are are way supportive once they see a sprout. And there's a lot of interesting design reasons as to why this happens in this game. But, um, and, and for the record, I don't think that's a good idea in EVE. Like, there's, man, talk about a kick me sign on a, on a, on a new player. But, uh, you know, something that allows people to create a legacy for themselves. Because that's what this is all about, right? It's, it's all about legacy, and yet there's no ability to really track that much of history. The only legacy that we get is Z-Killboard, which is not great as far as, you know, these kinds of things go. It also really emphasizes the fact that this game is only PvP. Like, the activity tracker. The activity tracker is not on the API, and it's not shareable, right? So... The only kind of accomplishment that I can really have is PvP. And that's not great. Warp drive yes, eminent entropy. It is it is much more high, highly regulated um, to the point where even being um, too demanding on somebody, like shitting on them for doing poorly, that is actually reportable. So there's more to it than that. And like I said, there's, there are reasons why, uh, why it is the way it is, for sure. But what I find very interesting is the result that they got, right? Um, not just how they got it, but what result they got. The fact that they have a community that is supportive. They have a community where if I decide to get impatient and pull a group early, people get on to me because I'm supposed to wait for anyone who wants to watch the videos to finish up all the videos and all that sort of stuff. Like, that is a totally different paradigm than not just EVE, but basically every other MMO and most cooperative uh, uh, online games, period. So, yeah, there's a lot of very, like, walled garden-ness to it, but the results are incredibly interesting. Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. That used to exist in EVE. Let me see. It used to be that in EVE, till skill injectors took away being able to tell newbie. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, when you look at a person's age, you could, you could generally know how much skill point. Well, no, because you can still see a new player because you can just look at their show info and they'll see the, the date that they were born. The difference is that that, does, that just doesn't tell you how much SP they have anymore. New players got treated well? I disagree with that sentiment. But... Maybe? I mean, I, I, I think that... Um, BTAC R actually represented the 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 sea change in that regard, um, because that's when you see it, really honestly, Fozisov, Fozisov is what changed things when it comes to that, because um, suddenly they need as many people as possible, and that's when you see the rise of groups like Brave Newbies, Karma Fleet. Everybody had to have their newbie group when before they didn't. And so while I agree to a certain extent of what you're saying, I think that it really was pushed to the forefront where people were actively pursuing, promoting, and teaching new bros uh, on a very real level 
uh, after BTEC R and the rise of things like Brave Newbies. Not BTEC R. Uh, well, I mean, BTEC R was a big moment, but uh, Asakai, because that's when Brave Newbies was created. And then Brave Newbies in that Halloween War. Drive active. Um, uh oh. Uh, that's when, like, the power of new bros were really shown off in that in that modern day, and therefore that's when you see the rise of of so many other new bro organizations. That's not a hundred percent true. I mean, obviously, Goon Swarm started as a giant new bro swarm, but they all kind of came from one place. It wasn't like a place for people to go as new bros in the same way that Brave Newbies was. Uh, oh boy. There's there's now conversations back and forth, and I feel like I might be missing a piece of it. So if I do, then got treated well as I joined, and then the normal transition from mining corp to renting, and now back to high sec. Well, when did you join, Boris? Just out of curiosity. Um, the first comment was supposed to lead towards a suggestion about mechanical complexity and whether a new game that is approachable, but which seems to have very rudimentary, better, very rudimentary social mechanics, retain players. Or if the idiom right now is you either try a game because streamers are being paid to play it, or you have an existing Discord group who wants to try a new game altogether. Well, from my understanding, statistics and, and, and CCP's reports indicate that uh, people are, new people are trying out EVE Online all the time. And they're not being retained. And they've worked really hard to make that happen. But I mean... The problem is, is that people aren't even getting to the point where they are looking for a group. And more, more, even triple important, here, here's the real problem, okay, when it comes to new breed. It, it isn't even about teaching people that they need to join a specific group. It's not even about recommending people's groups. You started in 2012? Yeah. I mean, let me, it was already, it was always okay. I don't know. I, I remember being left kind of up to my own device. They wanted me, but uh, they didn't do much to help me out. But maybe that's just me not liking being in a big organization. But my point was not that it was bad back then, but you really saw this take a whole new level once you hit um, the rise of, you know, Brave Newbies, Karma Fleet, Pandemic Horde, and the like. And then, of course, now that the war deck changes are happening, now you have groups like mine and other groups that are high sec and there with people. Um, one of the big problems was is that new players couldn't coalesce into groups and uh, there weren't groups that were able to operate in their area publicly because war decks would just suppress any any other groups or, you know, a lot of the groups in high sec. So I think that some of that's changed with the war deck changes, but um, I don't know. It's a growing process. I'm talking about New World, but EVM promoted. Right. Well, you just said um, EVM right now is either you pay a streamer to get it or play it or you don't. And my point is, my, the point that I was saying is, is that CCP actually doesn't seem to have a problem oh, getting God. people. Oh, Thank God, you. am I going to die right now? I did a b mistake, and I didn't get punished for it. Yet. Speaking of noob corpse, Cal has two Athenors and barely knows anything, it seems like. Yeah, uh... Oops. I... <laughs> when, <laughs> when he was setting that up, I even... I said... Just so that we're aware, like, before we get any further into this conversation, I just need you to understand that this is a bad idea, right? Like, I'm okay with you going with a bad idea. This game is all about bad ideas. I just need you to understand that dropping an Athenor on a whim because you want to take things to the next level 
without doing any research about where you're putting it or what you're going to do with it. Uh, fi uh, files under bad idea. <laughs> but, again, EVE Online is about the practical application of, of bad ideas, so... Uh, in the end, worked out just fine for him. All alphas are really cheering for you right now. The word X force into place poke random citadels because of the holding courts. We don't know who will give us a fight, and the collateral damage from that is legit new bros. I'm not sure if I follow that, Boris. This is my high sec outs. Right, but I so the way that word X work now is that like there is something on the line you're right maybe they won't show up to defend themselves but maybe they will the issue was is that prior to this no one ever did it because they said that what was it like 90 percent of all war decks went by with nobody dying on either side and like the vast 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 majority of war decks were a being created by the same people and b um not simply suppressing people more than actually providing good content. So, um, I mean, the Shell Corp, why is that an issue? Because you get to punish them if they don't want to defend themselves, right? Like, if I yeet into Nullsec and I start doing an ESS run and they dock up, I don't get a fight, but they get to choose whether or not they want to defend their stuff. Right? If I just want to have a structure up and if it gets taken down, then that's then whatever, then that's a way of doing it. But the problem is, is that Wardex willy nilly makes it so that you just attack everybody. And that actually ends up being significantly worse than just simply chasing after structures. And this is, I mean, this is, this is, there's a reason why as soon as CCP did this, did the evaluation of the, of the metrics on this, they immediately made the change and then followed up with it afterwards with, with, uh, with further tweaking because they realized that this was the single greatest problem for long-term retention that they were having in the game. So like, this is not like. As much as you may like not like shell corps or the fact that you can't war deck certain groups, like this is how people's identities get formed. And if if you blow up their structure and they lose it, well, maybe the uh, maybe the members of that group are going to get mad that their shit is never protected. We've defended before. We've defended a few times. In fact, this last time, the only reason why we didn't defend was because it was part of a big betrayal. So, like, anything that we did could have potentially have just been further um, aggravating the problem, and we knew that the force that was coming and how big they were. So, you know, under different circumstances, we can and have defended. It, um, but, again... What's the alternative? Because if the alternative is you can war deck anybody, that has significantly worse problems than just some of my, you know, our war decks often end up with us just shooting the structure and being done. Because it used to be that a war deck meant that you did nothing besides Camp Jita for that period of time, and that just makes all of these corpses stop logging in, or better yet, or more likely dissolve. I, I I understand that, Boris, but at the same time, I mean, you're picking fights in, in high sec. If you really want consistent fights, there are other places to pick fights. Yeah, exactly what Moo Badger says. Start start knocking over citadels in low sec. Guarantee you that more people will show up to fight. Y 
you don't get everything everywhere. You have to acknowledge the 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 intricacies of each space, right? So how you kill people in high sec is different than how you kill people in wormhole space, which is different than how you kill people in low sec. And so, like, each of them have their strengths and weaknesses. Exactly. And the issue is, is that, so, like, the other piece to this that isn't talked about that much is that, um, like, so, when you make this game, you make your avatar. Now, here's a fun fact. I, I told CCP, oh, uh, I, t I talked to CCP uh, Burger about this. And I told him that they need to move the sculpting system to... This is actually my first wormhole I've scanned down, I just realized. Like, I literally wasn't even thinking about wormholes as a scannable thing, because everything's been combat or relic or data. Either way, that's really bizarre. Um... So my idea was is that like go through the MPE and then sculpt your character now that you've invested now that you kind of know a thing or two about what's going on. And they said, you know what? You might not think it, but they tried this and it was awful for retention. That that there's something about the character creation process that gets people invested. Right? And so but the issue is, is that your character, while when you're making your character, you kind of see it as your identity, very quickly in EVE Online, you kind of stop thinking about your character and your identity as much. So, um... So the idea of having a corporation that is your identity, that you build up, your legacy, and all that stuff, uh, I think is really good. So, corporations need to be able to build up, grow, and corporations that... The, the thing about the structure system with Wardex is that it makes it so, in order to become exposed, you have to have skin in the game. You have to... And, and you get a lot of advantages for having skin in the game. But... You know, you you get those advantages, but that also comes with new risks, new exposure, and new challenges, which is really kind of what all levels of, P of EVE Online is, right? You can do the basic thing, but to step up, it's not only just more of the same, but there's additional layers of complexity, additional considerations that must take, be taken into, into in order to uh, advance. So, you know, in this case, now, player, you know, groups that want to... Uh, access those group objectives, which is really what structures are, right? They're group resources. They're, they're, they're organizational level resources in the same way that Titans used to be, right? So our group wants an Athenor. Why? So that way our group can moon mine. Our group wants an Astros. Why? So we can have a clone bay. So that way we can swap our, our clones easier. Our group wants an, uh, a right through. Why? So we can build stuff easier and, and faster and cheaper. You know, you, you get what I'm saying? And so it becomes a group thing. And if that group doesn't want to defend it, well, I mean, at a certain point, that's going to start to, to suck for them. But that's a choice that they get to make, right? But so you as an invader, they put their skin in the game because they want those additional advantages. You get to force them to either justify that skin in the game or lose it. But the only thing that you can really do is take out their ante. And overall, I think that that's a pretty fair system. And then the final piece of this is the attackers being able to destroy the war headquarters very quickly. I think that that's the key piece to all of this that a lot of people, like, we haven't really accepted yet. Because it's not just about your ability to defend. If you can, if you can attack their citadel and destroy it before your timers, which their timers are compressed, then that ends the war. Uh, that ends the war, and they have to go, right? So, I think that leaning into that is a better is a good idea. Like I, I always, I've wanted to make a merc group that specializes in defending corporations in high sec. And one of the services to offer is expediency, right? Like, not only will we, 
You can pay us a certain amount to show up to defend your structures at the timers, but you can pay us more to hit their structure like right now and take it out before before your structure is even under threat. I think that there's really something there. But the problem is, is that EVE Online is a sandbox. And so CCP can only fix the situation so far. And ultimately, it's up to us to build those sandcastles in the sandbox. What's up, Deadmine's podcast? How's it going, dude? What, are you streaming still? Like, around, like what, what, what's up with you? What's up with you? Miss you, man. I'm going to go check out this wormhole, and hopefully I don't die. Warp drive active. We sometimes do deals like that, but it's rare. Right, it's rare, but at the same time, I don't see a lot of people advertising it. I don't see, like, Noir Mercenaries does it, but it might, like, there's nobody who's watching War Deck groups to see who, there's war, who they're war decking to reach out to those people to offer assistance. For money. Dangerous unknown parts of space. That ain't gonna work. Warp drive active. Been doing a bunch of doctor visits. Oh boy. I hope everything's okay. Uh, YouTube plug time. Is this going up on YouTube sometime after? Yes. Uh, generally speaking, a lot of these videos go up on YouTube. I, I really want to, um, start to trim them down so that way I'm not posting a six hour YouTube video because those have really bad stats. Let me just tell you. Uh, so actually this is a good point. This is an offer to whoever wants to do it. I need help. I need producers. I need people to help me make the content happen. And I will offer to give you scope syndication skins to be on my team. Uh, if you want more information, DM me. Uh, where was I? No results. Warp drive active. I just realized I'm going completely blind because I didn't check the map. Whoopsie. <laughs> exactly. Emily. But like the uh yeah, what I need is somebody who can help me make sure like there are already people watching my stuff. Help me pull out the good stuff so that way it can be sent over or make sure that things get done. Cuz the problem is is that like I can do a lot of this stuff, but if my ADHD kicks in, I just don't get it done. And once it's not done for a day, now it's behind. And so the chances of it getting done after that becomes drive active. like it makes it even less likely to be done, which is why you end up with videos like you do, where it's just like, here's the video. There's no, there's no, uh, there, there's no real effort in the thumbnail or anything like that, which is all awful to do on YouTube. But like, it's either that or just not do it. So, oh golly. Warp drive active. I wonder who's more scared of the other. You know what? Let's do the Poshvin thing. Oh. Your diabetic stuff lost a lot of weight. I'm well, I'm glad that you're feeling a lot better. I'm glad that you're feeling a lot better. All right, so I have 80 million isk worth of stuff in my cargo bay, right? My Stratios or my Acero is worth more than that, but uh, <laughs> um, that's okay. I mean, I could have made more. This is just an attempt to, to do it. I've been I've been out here for another two or three hours. So let's go ahead and get home. Let's go try to get home. 
It's actually getting to be kind of time for me to start wrapping up anyway. So here we go. So here's what we're going to do. It's going to be complicated or it's going to be risky. This is actually the most risky part. I'm going to yeet into Poachvin and then I need to stay safe for 15 minutes and then I can get out. Or I can scan out of the wormhole. I know probes are out, but probes automatically get sucked in, but sure. So that's the plan. Y'all ready for this? Let's see where we end up. You can, I could just dock up. But the problem with docking up in Poachfin is uh, that's how you get gate camped. <laughs> Or, uh, station camped, rather. Where am I? Oh, I'm in Sekenta. Warp drive active. Oh, man. Oh, there's a disrupted gate, but there's a war post here, too. I definitely don't want to hang around, then. There's the disrupted gate. Warp drive active. Who cares about station camp? Just start a new character, get a new hero, and do this again? The, the point is, is that I'm simulating somebody who gives a shit. Like a new bro. N not a fully new bro, but, like, I'm simulating a person with, like, a million... Uh, or like uh, maybe a month into the game, right? So they've done some yeet exploration. They've got a feel for how exploration works. And now they want to kind of take it up to the next level. So they want to step into an Astero. We're just focusing on whether or not that's a bad idea or not. So I have to do everything legit. There is a station, however. Eventually, you'll have a whole fleet of a star, a, a asteri. Well, this is actually one of the reasons why I think that uh, Poachvin is, is very interesting. So here's the thing about Poachvin a lot of people haven't paid attention to. This is, this is the piece. It took me a long time to figure this out. So maybe I was the last person, but I don't think so. So the secret is these filaments right here, right? These glorification Devana filaments are... Um, are available for purchase in NPC in the NPC stations. Spitbulls don't have no T three destroyers don't have a scan bonus, does it? I just realized I can scan. I'm stupid. Let's go ahead and scan. Maybe I can find the wormhole. How do I scan again? There we go. Uh, so the thing about those Devana filaments is that what I think that needs to happen is we need to see more solo and small gang groups that live in Pochvin. Don't don't try to control Pochvin or anything like that or fucking whatever. You want to you live in Pochvin, and then whenever you want to. You undock, yeet out, gain some resources or whatever, and then use your filament to get back in. And it really doesn't matter where you end up in Pochvin, because you live in Pochvin. You just dock it all up, and then you can move things into position wherever you can. And while the station bonuses aren't great, like, with that much access to low sec and null sec stuff, um... I think that that could be a totally viable option because these the glorification filaments, the Vana filaments, will bring you to golly gee willikers. Do I there is so many? Wait a minute. Uh,
I bet you that is a group running a site. I mean, as long as I don't see combat scanners, I'm technically okay. All right, there's the first wormhole. Now, these wormholes are also going to be super dangerous. Just scanning them down is not enough. Although, if it's an Edencom one, because this character has neutral standings, I should be... Oh, God, there's a mobile large warp disruptor, too. <sighs> All right. Well, this is, this is getting spooky fast. Whatever I was saying before, oh, Devana filaments, whatever. I don't remember any of it at this point, so I'll get back to it when I get it, get there. In the meantime, I have something very squirrely to do. Fuck! Don't do that. Alright, so this wormhole. This, this, the, the warp disruption bubble is in that direction. Which... Man, I don't know. Basilisks, Gila, Magus, fuck, Paladin, Legion. Okay, well, fuck. All right. Uh, okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to warp to this wormhole at range and then immediately warp off after book, uh, you know, we're going to bookmark the, uh, the wormhole at the site and then warp off. I'm not dissing Strybog. What? What? When did I diss Strybog? There's nothing wrong with bigger organizations in in here. I was just saying that. Fuck! Not the right one. Warp drive active. So this one has sleepers on the outside, which means it'll lead to wormhole space. So I just didn't even bother bookmarking it. Uh, I mean, I do have a redemption that forces me to post something in local. Let's get a different position on this wormhole to be able to scan active. it. See, this is the part that's interesting to me, right? Like, all this other stuff that we do, like, just normal hacking or running around or whatever, like, that's, that's fine. But, like, I have a problem right now, right? Like, I need to figure out whether or not I can get around this wormhole. Fuck! Fuck it. Warp drive active. Gotta go now. This is where the large warp disruption bubble is gonna be. Nope. Excellent.
warp drive active. Now, there's a reasonably good chance that they could, or not a reasonably good chance, but there is a chance that they could get back into position right now and, and cut me off. But this is also my best way out. So let's go. Warp drive active. I'll salute in local right before jumping out. How about that? If I make it. Woot woot! Oh, seven's in local. Jump out. Now there could be trig on this side, which there is. But none of those scram. So, warp drive active. I made it, guys. So, three to four hours of just running around in null sec. I didn't get that much money doing it. Uh, I made 80 million or so doing it. But, uh, I mean, if anything, we've, we proved that this strategy is 100% viable. Whew. And I'm in Kaldari space already. Let's see how far away from Jita I am. I am... Come on. Hammer and Nails, thank you for joining us down the rabbit hole of Jeeva Online. I'm three jumps from Jita, guys. That's it. Three jumps from Jita. So, you could do this... You can do this in a T1 exploration frigate, obviously. Like, everything I did just now, there's no reason why I was in a Sero. You could have, I could have done the exact same thing in a Heron, or I could have done the exact same thing in an Anathema. It's fine. Uh, the, so, you know, it could, you could do this for, like, two, three million isk. And as you can see, like, I even used the filaments to get home, and it was easy peasy. I decided I wanted to get home, and 15 minutes later, I was. Uh, yeah, keep poaching filaments on your in you with you in, in wormholes at all times. I, I personally believe that they need to nerf the filaments in wormhole space, give them a spool up time or something. But until they do, you're dumb to not have them. Yeah, you have you just have to be on your toes. This is why when people say to new players that this or when people tell me that this is a bad thing to recommend to new players. Fuck you. First of all, the assumption that a new player could have a negative experience and then just fail off because of it, yes, it could happen. But, like, why would you assume that, right? Like, if if I yeeted out and then went and did stuff and it was, like, and it got blown up, every single time that I've gone, like, had somebody yeet out and they ended up losing it, guess what? That moment is exciting. It makes you want to do it again, right? Like, Four hours of just hacking cans and not getting anything done, or not encountering anybody or whatever, that's boring. But having this, like, culmination of being hunted and then finally exploding and all this stuff, like, that's exciting. And if it costs, like, three million isk, you just, you do it again. That teaches people a way to play the game. It, get, it, lets, it lets you go off and have an adventure. And I think that that's an amazing thing for new players to do. Uh, I mean, the exit filament might put you someplace really nasty, but it'll probably put you in low sec, which honestly should be fine. Exactly. I recommend I that's why I made uh, this uh, Reddit post like years ago. Um, let's see. Yeet exploration. It's funny because or a, a year ago because somebody. Well, I guess Poshin's not that old. Um, Somebody even commented that in a different post that they used this and recommended it. And I, I love that, that a lot of people have really gotten a lot, a lot of value out of this one little post. But uh, yeah, like seriously, if you want an adventure, Yeet Exploration is the way to fucking do it. 
it costs you three minutes, uh, three million or so. It's, it's, uh, you could make hundreds of million depending on what happens. And, uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's something that EVE Online has been missing, which is an adventure in a box, right? Like, the good thing about instance stuff is that it's like, oh, well, you can, instance stuff allows you to, like, ensure that there's, the, or, or queuing, you know, these are ways that games ensure that you go on some sort of adventure easily. But these Yeet Exploration filaments, you don't know what's going to happen, but it's an adventure, and every adventure is different, right? I think it's a great option. But as I said, if somebody lives in Pochvin, then they have the option of either using Yeet filaments to go do exploration or or ESS raids in Nullsec, and then they can use Divana filaments to land in high sec and low sec systems. But here's the thing about that. Those high sec and low sec systems are are Triglavian minor victories. And a lot of people avoid Triglavian minor victories. So you can yeet into low sec and mine there and be probably fine because A, there's not going to be that many people in there to give you problems. B, there's probably going to be ore there because there's no one mining it because it's too dangerous. And C, if you have good enough standings with the Triglavians, they will defend you. So then you go out there, you go to low sec, you extract the low sec minerals, and then you just bring it fucking home. Easy peasy, in out, no problem. That's why they said harvest in the fields of glorification, hunt in the fields of glorification. That's the low sec and high sec Triglavian minor victories. That's a piece, like, I was in, um, I was doing one of Dutch Gunner's standings fleets in Pochfin, and I was, we were giving out these filaments, and I had a Divana, and I always thought of a Divana as being like a worse extraction filament. But if you think about it from the terms of the person who lives in Pochfin, who needs to go out to get things and bring them back, or go out to do things and then come back, that is not only effective, but if you think about it, it's the Triglavian way. Why do the Triglavians have tier one filaments in their cargo hold? Because that's how they get home. Why don't they have a different filament? Because that's, they already used it to get out here, right? They filament out of Abyss, they raid us, and then they filament home. That's why they have filaments in their cargo hold. That's how they get in and out. And now we can do the same thing. You can li That's why I've said from the very beginning of Pochfin, the best thing to do in Pochfin is just to simply go native. Be like the Triglavians are. Roam around, hunt the shit in Pochfin, raid outwards, kill, punish, steal, loot, everything on the outside, and bring it all in to Pochfin where your resources are and your stronghold is, knowing that no one can kick you out of it because it's an NPC station. There's no, it's, it's, it's a play style. And it's a play style that I think a lot more people can get into. And I think that the thing that I'm really surprised at is that we don't see more streamers getting into that, right? Because like, that's request. fucking perfect for streamers. Or, or, you know, if, if what you do is ESS raids, then do it from Pochvin. Stop needing to get home or to high sec in order to deal with your, your little tokens. Stop trying to use as asset safety to save the tokens. Just go back to Pochvin, dock them up, and then eat out again. It's, it's the perfect on-demand content that is manageable. It is, it is everything that a wormhole is, but without any of the bullshit of having to like scan down your chains in order to do anything. I appreciate that, Emily, but no, I've been saying this for a while. Here, I will timestamp that so that way I can pull out that ramp rant. How about that? The problem is that even if I timestamp them, I still have to go back and actually like extract these things out. There is a there's a there's a tool that lets us get highlights. But again, like it takes time to do all that. So if anybody's interested in going through my stuff and helping me, uh, you know, transfer content over to. Uh, YouTube and or or any kind of if you want to help me out with making YouTube videos, you want to be part of my production team, we want to work together. I have uh, skins to give out for payment. Uh, living in Pochfin seems kind of boring, don't you think? People don't really hang out in space too much to kill. You don't hang out in Pochfin. You go other places. You live your Pochfin is just your base of operations. It's so that you can bring everything home, and and mass it up there and then from there attack out to everywhere 
right? And also, people do hang out in Space to Kill because of, like, sites and stuff. But I, I, I believe that it's more about raiding out of Poachfin. The defending of Poachfin is its own thing and is a good way to gain standings. But the purpose is to use it, as Emily puts it, it's a staging zone where you form up, fill out, fit out, and launch ops. And the other thing is, is that, like, so let's say, um, like, Benny Hill fleets. Benny Hill fleets are awesome. Um, and they usually start out in Jita, which is fine, but what if they started out in Poachfin? Because, like, the thing about Poachfin is anyone can get there from everywhere, right? So people can, you could, you could actually easily form up with people and then go and do things. Especially now that the gates have been unlocked, especially with scouts and stuff. Like, I just, I feel like there's something there for especially streamers Especially these streamers that want to create like a new small group and go do things like ESS raids and such. Like, it, 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 it might be worth considering Poachfin. I love Benny Hill fleets. Does he make an onion volcano? <laughs> Oh, Benny Hanna. Ha <laughs> ha. I got that. Took me a moment. All right. I think actually I need to go soon. So let's go ahead and wrap things up. And then uh, head on out. I'll be back.